So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, unfortunately, I had the last presentation, so you're probably very tired. I'm really happy you're here. Uh, so because you're still tired, and I'd like to make this presentation, uh, I, or I appreciate, appreciate more action in this presentation. Uh, I would be happy if you, if you are more interactive. So if, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and don't hesitate to ask. OK, so firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Pavel Luptak. I'm from Slovakia, but at this time I live in Prague. I'm a crypto anarchist. You know what is crypto anarchy or crypto anarchist? Uh, so I'm crypto anarchist means that I believe that crypto technologies can provide us completely new kind of personal and economic freedom. I'm also voluntarist, what means that I believe that any relationships between humans, for example, in any relationship, uh, should be always mutually voluntary. So for example, I'm against taxation because it's a one-way relationship. And I'm focused on technology and society hacking. I'm also the organizer of the International Crypto Anarchistic Conference, Hackers Congress Polonia Police. If I have some time, I can tell you more information about this upcoming event. Uh, we are organized during the first weekend of October. And then I'm founder of a few IT security businesses. The first company uh, is Netemba. We are a Slovak penetration testing company. Uh, do a lot of web application testing and mobile application testing in Slovakia, Czech Republic, even in Poland. And a few months ago, with my friends, I started a new startup, which is called Hacktrophy, which is quite a unique project. It's a bug bounty program, similar to HackerOne. So if you're a hacker and you are, you, you are using some uh, bug bounty programs, you should definitely check our new bug bounty program, Hacktrophy.com. I also uh, co-founded two hacker spaces, the first one in Bratislava called Progress Bar, the second one in Prague called Pravni Polis. And I like contemporary art, so I'm also the member of Czech contemporary anti-government artistic group called Stehoven. Three years ago, as a member of Stehoven, I had one presentation at the Confidence. So what, about, what do you should expect from my presentation? So, my goal is to explain to you that thanks to the government, thanks to the government institution like FBI, uh, NSA, CIA, uh, we have really secure crypto markets. We have uh, advanced crypto market with the technologies like decentralization and true anonymous cryptocurrencies like Monero or Bitcoin. So my first question is how many of you are using bitcoins? Raise your hand, don't hesitate. Cool. How many of you uh, have ever visited crypto market? Perfect. How many of you have already used Monero? Okay, we just threw anonymous cryptocurrency. How many of you used some other uh, true anonymous cryptocurrency like Zcash? Okay, fine. So, uh, security of crypto markets is a really sensitive topic. The thing is that uh, you cannot provide legal IT security consultation to crypto markets because the main activity of crypto markets is strictly illegal. Um, another thing is that the security of crypto markets is much more uh, important than the security of banks, for example, or, or banking application because if you uh, if you have bad security in some banks, probably some people steal your money. That's all. But in case of crypto markets, thousand people, many often innocent people, would end up in jail. So this, this is a really big problem. And so uh, doing any research about security of crypto markets is not very popular. And personally, I didn't find any, any serious IT security paper. What I can tell you, because I, I did my personal analysis, the research of security mark, uh, crypto markets, um, I can tell you that some, uh, s uh, the security of some of them uh, are even better than uh, security of many Google applications or 
popular social network. So let's begin with the first truly most famous crypto market, which is Silk Road version one. So this crypto market was really big success. So it had revenue more than one, one um, billion dollars and almost 80 million dollars in commission. But despite all this, the Silk Road market was not very secure. It was a single server, no decentralization. As you know, at now we have a fully decentralized crypto markets. I'm going, I'm going to present it later. It was quite shitty, vulnerable PHP application. There was no uh, two-factor authentication, no multi-seq. And of course, in that time, we had only bitcoins. So there were no true anonymous cryptocurrency support. But despite of all these things, it took two years for FBI to track down the identity of the server and shut down the, the, the given server. So sometimes operational security can save your life. Yeah, uh, Ross Ulbricht, you can, you can see him at, at, at this photo, end up in jail, in Manhattan jail, for double life, which basically means that theoretically, if some government decided to, uh, to, to remove one uh, life sentence, he still uh, will have another life, another life sentence. Okay, uh, so now I'd li I would like to describe in more details security characteristic of the current uh, crypto markets and compare it with the first version of crypto markets and how it was significantly improved compared uh, with the Silk Road market version two, version one. So firstly, Almost all crypto markets implement two-factor authentication, so you don't need, you not, you don't need to follow a PCI DSS uh, if you're a crypto market. I mean, almost all biggest crypto markets, like Alphabay, for example, or Outlaw, Outlaw they really require 2FA, two-factor authentication. Uh, for two-factor authentication, always, almost always is used uh, PGP private key owner verification. So it works in such a way that the, the given crypto market just generates some seed, some random value. This random value is encrypted with your public PGP key and you need to download the given encrypted file, uh, to try to decrypt, decrypt it with your private key. And if you're able to decrypt it with your private key, uh, you can prove that you are the true owner of the given uh, public PGP key. So it ba also basically means that uh, if you want to register to any crypto market, you need to upload your public PGP key. So it's really necessary and mandatory for most crypto markets. Another thing is that um, two-factor authentication uh, in case of crypto markets is not implemented like OTP. So if you, if you use Bitcoin services, a lot of Bitcoin services or cryptocurrency services, you probably know Google Authenticator, which is pretty uh, nice tool. But in case of crypto markets, forget about this. Because uh, crypto, crypto market developers they still do not trust OTP. They're quite conservative. So PGP private key verification is the only way how you can verify uh, yourself using uh, 2FA. Forgotten password. Another, another problem and or another difference between the crypto markets and a classical eShop is that when you register some to, to classical eShop, you need to put your email address. This is not the case of crypto markets because no one knows your true identity. So instead of your email address, uh, during the registration, you need to remember your mnemonic phrase which is generated uh, during the first login. So we need to remember or store this mnemonic phrase. And, it's the, uh, and then it's uh, the only way how you can ask or how you can change forgotten password. Anti-DDoS protection. So uh, like Tor Hidden Services, most crypto, crypto markets use Tor Hidden Services. Some, other, uh, some crypto markets use I2P hidden services. I2P is protocol. I will mention later, but ITP is quite similar to Tor. There are some differences. Anyway, um, like 
Tor, uh, Tor Hidden Services are quite often under, uh, under very strong distributed denial of service attacks. Uh, it also means that if you are the government and you, and, you have, and you have compromised a lot of exit nodes, Tor exit nodes, you are able to make, uh, and you are able to intercept all communication on these exit nodes. You are, you are able to measure this communication on exit nodes at uh, various ISP. And thanks to this, you can make some statistical uh, analysis and, and try to compromise Tor security. Uh, so this is technically possible. This is also one potentially possibly one of the way how um, FBI was able to detect Ross Ulbricht. So at this time, many crypto markets that have a special anti DDoS protection is usually CAPTCHA. As you know, as if you are penetration tester, ethical hackers, you know that all CAPTCHAs can be easily cracked. And also many crypto markets, for example, the biggest one. Um, Alpha Bay, it uses double tour security. So one tour connection is encapsulated to another connection. And if you are a trusted seller or if you are a trusted buyer at some crypto market, usually you have a separate tour hidden service address, especially for you, which is different as the public tour hidden service address, which is under uh, denial, distributed denial of service attack. So this is a great way how you can easily buy or sell some stuff, uh, despite the fact that the given crypto market is under strong uh, distributed denial of service attack. Contracts. Contracts is it's another interesting security feature that uh, basically you can, you can make uh, some kind of agreement between uh, sellers and, and buyers using the property which is, which is called contract. Uh, each contract costs $5 to initiate. You need to pay this uh, amount to, to the administrators. So uh, there are also quite strict ethical rules. So for example, hitmen, murderers, or never allowed. Multisig. Uh, Multisig is, is another interesting feature of uh, the current crypto markets. The problem is that when some government agency like FBI, NSA uh, shut down your crypto market, usually they can steal all your Bitcoins or Moneros or any cryptocurrency you use. So uh, that's why we have multisig, which basically means that the given transaction is uh, successful when at least two sides from three sides successfully signed the given transaction. So even if some secret agency, government agency, shut down the crypto market, because when, it, uh, when you are using multisync, they are not able to, to take uh, the crypto market money. Uh, the, I don't have a time to go deeper, but this exact, uh, exact description of how multisync works in case of Al Alpha Bay, which is probably one of the most developed, one of the most secure crypto market in the world. Tumble your Bitcoins. The problem of Bitcoin is that many people think that Bitcoin is anonymous. That's not true. Bitcoin is pseudo-anonymous because Bitcoin has a public blockchain. In a public blockchain of Bitcoin, you can see all transactions. The only thing is that there is no connection between reality and uh, so, so you have no idea who owns the given private key. Uh, but you can see all signed transactions in Bitcoin blockchain. So, for example, if some government agents reveals uh, physical identity of some person, they are able to map it to the given Bitcoin address, and uh, subsequently they are able to to correlate it with some other buyers, sellers, and so on. And they they are able to hunt other other people involved in the crypto market. So, basically, Bitcoin is not secure. Bitcoin is not anonymous. So if you want to have anonymous Bitcoins, you need to laundry your Bitcoin. So there are a lot of laundry services. Uh, I use, like, in a more formal way, we used to call them um, mixing services. And I mentioned two famous ones, Bitblender, Gram Gramshelix. But my favorite way of mixing is definitely through Monero. So if you, if you have some Bitcoin and you, you, you need to, you need to uh, give up your transaction Bitcoin history. Firstly, I recommend you to change your Bitcoin to Monero. 
There are at least three, three, uh, three uh, ways of how you can do that. For example, you can use Shapeshift, which is um, altcoins exchange service. You can use Ploniex, or you can use any uh, altcoin exchange service. And then you can use service which is called XMR.2 and uh, change your Monero to the Bitcoin. So, you so finally, you receive completely new Bitcoin that have, that have history which, is, which, which cannot be associated with you as a physical person. Okay. Uh, now we, I would like to tell you something more about Monero. Personally, I'm a big fan of Monero because Monero is a nice example of truly anonymous cryptocurrency. Truly anonymous cryptocurrency means that uh, when you just see to the Monero blockchain, uh, for the random observer, it looks like, like random data. You have you know, nothing. Because you need your private key, you need to use your private key to scan the whole Monero blockchain to find out transactions which are for you and which not. So uh, what basically means is that Monero at this time, it does, uh, there, is, there is no SPV wallet. So you need to download the whole Monero blockchain. It can be a pain because Monero blockchain at this time has about f more than four, uh, 40 gigabytes. But if you stay anonymous, there is no other way to do that. Anyway, so Monero uh, uses something which is called ring signatures. And thanks to the ring signatures, uh, it is not possible to reveal senders of your Monero. Basically, it works in such a way that, uh, that um, I would like to compare the ring signature to the situation that imagine that there are uh, like some, some military or some, some politician, they have to do some very unpopular decision. For example, they want to start a third uh, world war, uh, but no one wants to be responsible for this bad decision or unpopular decision. So what they do, they, um, all of them, they, they use their private key uh, to sign the given decision. So for example, 10 different politicians use 10 uh, private keys to uh, sign one decision. And what they do, they just create ring signatures. So it's technically, it's not possible to reveal who, who, who is responsible behind this uh, decision you are able just to uh, estimate the probability or likelihood of, uh, of the given per uh, how, 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 how likely is that the given politician signs uh, the given decision. So in the quite similar way, in, it works in case of Monero uh, ring signatures. Another thing is stealth addresses. Stealth addresses are also the great way how you can, how you can completely anonymize uh, recipients of your blockchain uh, transaction. So it basically means the difference, for example, between, between Bitcoin and Monero is that in case of Monero, your, your Bitcoin address is just hash of, uh, of your, some kind of hash of your public key. In this, um, in this situation, your Monero address um, is, um, is last, your, your recipient address encrypted with the public key, so basically you need your private key to reveal, uh, which, to reveal which transaction are exactly for you, and, able, uh, and you, need, you need this information all, all also if you want to spend this transaction. So this probably a bit older Monero charts. Now the current price of Monero is about $30. Personally, I expect that the price of Monero will be much higher in the following month, especially, uh, especially when when Bitcoin will be, uh, or when, when Bitcoin is prohibited in many countries, and when there will be some more usable application with a better user interface and hardware wallet support. Okay, inline PGP encryption and PGP WebMe client. So uh, it's necessary to realize that all crypto markets have access to your public PGP key and your key, uh, key your, your storage. So uh, many crypto markets uh, allow you to set option which is called automatic message encryption. And it means that all messages 
inside your crypto market mailbox is fully encrypted by your public key, so only you, as the owner of your private key, can decrypt the uh, all messages in your in your mailbox. Sometimes um, I also find uh, I also found that uh, some crypto markets they try to in, uh, they try to implement a PGP webmail client, which is a really crazy idea. What basically means that you need to provide your private PGP key uh, directly to the browser. The browser will store your private PGP key uh, using HTML5 storage. Uh, and so basically, you can uh, interactively decrypt and sign your messages inside of your browser. I strongly not, I strongly not to recommend to do something like this, because as we know, browsers are just too complex, and complexity means automatically a vulnerabilities, a lot of vulnerabilities. So never put your private PGP key to the browser. Now I, I would like to describe some best practices when you want to use crypto markets uh, as a client. So uh, if, you have, if you have bitcoins or if you have some cryptocurrency, it's really easy to pay uh, fully anonymous VPN. So the best combination is just encapsulate Tor connection inside to some anonymous VPN. Uh, also, all good crypto markets, they do not use JavaScript. And, uh, and, uh, and better crypto markets ask you explicitly to disable JavaScript. Because as we know, historically a few years ago, there were really critical zero-day exploit in f Windows version of Firefox, and NS NSA, FBI, American government agencies use these vulnerabilities to reveal true identity of Tor uh, users. The other, uh, another option is use Tails. Tails is a specific privacy ever Linux distribution uh, used by many journalists in many dictatorship countries. Uh, sometimes it is also possible to use BitMessage, for example, and of course you can you, you can also try to run the MAC addresses, use uh, try to hack some wireless network, something like that. For example, in Slovakia and Czech Republic, there is an Android application which is called Router Key Genialosek, and you see you can use this application to hack UPC Wi-Fi network. Server side security. Okay, so you are on the opposite side. You are uh, administrator and the owner of the crypto markets. So what do you, what do you should do to, to take care about security? So firstly, all server uh, should always fold full list encryption. It dealt with a hidden, hidden volume. This may be a bit complicated because um, many servers use uh, virtualized server, ha server housing. So when you, usually when you want to pay server housing uh, using bitcoins, you get not a physical server, but you get a virtualized server. So you, you, you need to be aware of, of this uh, security issue. Of course, when you are admin, you should leave no traces. So when you try to connect your crypto market, you should always use Tor to access uh, the virtual machine. Uh, as I mentioned, there are crypto markets like Alphabet, they use double Tor security. And uh, double, double Tor security uh, can be a problem sometimes because they, uh, it exposes the connection to the able exit nodes. Uh, and of course, if you are a crypto market uh, owner, you should definitely store your Bitcoins and Monero on a completely different server. Ideally, you should use something what, what is called cold wallets. Now, I'd like to describe some decentralized crypto markets. At this time, uh, there is multiple decentralized crypto markets proposal, but the only fully functional one is OpenBuzzer project. So in the following month, there should be released version two, which fully supports IPFS, uh, which works over TCP connection, which works over Tor. And the Tor support is even now uh, integrated in GitHub of OpenBuzzer. There is also 
probably the more the more serious competitor to open bazaar project which is called shadow project uh, before it was umbrella project and now it's now it, this project was re renamed to the project particle.io okay now i like to compare the some technical differences or security differences between tor and i2p uh, like i2p protocol seems to be more um, more secure than Tor. The difference is, for example, that in case of I2P, I2P is a fully decentralized, but this can be a problem because, um, because if you have, in, in case of Tor, you have uh, so-called Tor directory servers. So um, there are only seven or maybe, maybe 10 uh, important Tor directory server. And if you just run your Tor browser, you firstly contact the Tor directory server, and Tor directory server provides you three different nodes, the entry node, middle node, and the exit node. In the case of I2P, you can contact any node in the I2P networks and ask for the given nodes, which basically means that if there is some secret government agencies, they infiltrate into I2P and you contact them, they, they can provide you uh, three, um, three infiltrated uh, I2P nodes. Anyway, the problem of I2P compared to Tor is that I2P network has only a few nodes. So it doesn't matter that I2P, from the security point of view, is a, a bit better protocol. The problem is there are only a few I2P nodes. And you, can, you cannot achieve true anonymous network if you have only a few, few, uh, few nodes. So this is the biggest problem of I2P. Also, uh, when you want to make distributed denial of service of I2P network, it's a much more complicated than in case of Tor. And another advantage of I2P may be that government agencies like NSA, FBI, and CIA, uh, they don't have, they still don't have enough, enough information about I2P because most people still use Tor inst instead of I2P. So I think if there are some zero-day exploits, uh, against anonymization of networks, it's quite likely that these zero-day exploits are against Tor, not I2P, because Tor is used only, only by few people. Crypto market best practices. So, so if you're an ordinary user, you want to use uh, crypto markets, you should definitely use multisig. You should definitely use two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is mandatory in case of Alpha Bay or Outlook. Also, your PGP is mandatory. So always, during the registration, you need to upload your PGP key. Um, some crypto markets disallow uh, the feature which is called finalize early. What basically means that uh, you, are not, uh, uh, you are not waiting if the given product or, uh, um, arrives to you or if the given service is provided to you. Uh, you can finalize early the given transaction and the provider or seller of the given service um, receives your money much a few days a few days early so uh, i don't recommend if if you are a newbie in case of crypto markets i strongly not, not recommend you to to use this feature finals early also be aware that bitcoin is not anonymous cryptocurrency the biggest crypto markets use, uh, use Monero, or they use Ethereum. Ethereum is also not a true anonymous cryptocurrency. Monero is true anonymous um, eCash. Also, there are some alternatives like Zcash, Zcoin, or Dash, but none of them are implemented in crypto markets. Currency account is it's not a security feature. It's a functionality feature, which basically means that if you don't trust uh, Cryptocurrencies, for example, because of their huge volatility, uh, you can uh, you can store your cryptocurrency like Monero, for example, or or Bitcoin in in so-called currency account, which means that you that you you have store your cryptocurrency in a fiat money in euros or dollars something like that. You need you just need to pay 50% uh, for such service. Dead drops. This is something absolutely cool, I think, uh, which basically means that uh, the traditional approach um, when you want to order something from the crypto market, some, some medicine, some drugs, anything, uh, you need to provide your physical postal address where the, the given staff 
is finally signed. Uh, dead drops basically means that when you order some, some stuff from the crypto markets, you pay it by Monero, you don't, you don't need to provide any physical address. You just receive two information. You receive GPS coordinates and 360 uh, degrees panoramatic video. So you just go to the given place specific uh, according to your GPS coordinates. You play your panoramatic video and you know exactly where the given stuff is physically stored. So there are a special reseller on crypto markets which are called Dropment. Uh, it means basically anonymous deliver boy. And these people are responsible for buying a lot of, a lot of stuff and distributing it uh, to different places. Uh, of course, uh, it's only a question of time when the, 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 these physical people, like human, human people or human, human beings will be replaced by, by drones. This some deep dub crypto market compressor. This is changing over time, so it, you can you can you can check the current information. Anyway, so what we can say is that security of crypto markets was uh, has been significantly improved, and it was caused by the government shutdown. So every time when the government agency shut down any crypto market. The next version is more secure, more anonymous, more decentralized. Uh, as, and we can see that the biggest crypto markets like Alphabet, Dream Market, Owl Market, and all these uh, biggest markets, they're online for many years without any shutdown. So what does it mean? It means that the war on drugs purely technically cannot be won. And also we can see that crypto anarchists with the crypto markets are always one step, step ahead to the government. So, uh, so in the crypto market, we can, we can uh, see um, very clear that the government information makes crypto market more resilient, more robust. So uh, despite the fact that we spend millions and millions, euros, dollars, lotis to, uh, to fight the drugs, this doesn't work. And there are more and more sophisticated way to uh, buy and sell drugs. And uh, I now, now I, I would like to tell you something more about our place we started in, in Prague. So crypto anarchists are real. In Prague, four years ago, we started the unique crypto anarchistic place, which is called Pralni Polis. It's in the center of Pla Prague called Halashevice. So we rented three, floor, three floors building. The first ground floor is a Bitcoin coffee. The second floor is a co-working space. And the third floor is the Institute of Crypto Anarchy. This place is unique that we do not accept any government money. We accept only Bitcoins or some cryptocurrency. So if you want to buy coffee, beer, anything, you need to have Bitcoins or some other crypto, um, cryptocurrency. This is a place, Parallel Nepal, it looks this is, uh, it's, it's completely black. And why you should visit this place? Uh, you should visit this place just because uh, during, sixth, during the first weekend of October from 6 until 8 of the October, there is International Hackers Congress, which is called Parallel Police Congress 2017. The topic of this Congress is Liberate. Subtopic is towards your financial freedom. And this Congress will be specific, specifically uh, focused on true anonymous cryptocurrencies. So person, I personally invited Monero core developer, Zcash core developer, Zcon core developer, and also um, people behind other interesting projects, uh, behind decentralized market and exchanges. And now I would like to read you the Crypto Anarchistic Manifesto, especially for this Congress I wrote, and it's real digital privacy, start with the protecting your financial transactions, leaving no traces, making impossible to see or intervene your voluntary economical interaction. With the rise of anonymous cryptocurrencies, for the first time in our human history, 
we can do a global, global business and stay anonymous. Anonymous prediction markets, anonymous anti-government insurance, anonymous crowdfunded whistleblowing, decentralized crypto markets, all these crypto technologies will undermine the current authoritative systems and make the significant change silently with no violence or politician. It's time, liberate yourself. Thank you a lot. Okay, time for questions, ask. Uh, do you think that in the nearby future, anonymous cryptocurrencies could be forbidden by the governments? <laughs> okay, so uh, anonymous cryptocurrency can be forbidden by the governments by the, the, by the same way as uh, marijuana, for example. So it, it will not work at all. You know, you know exactly how marijuana prohibition works in Poland. I think all, all uh, weed smokers, they have access to marijuana and basically the, the, what you can do as a government, you can just say, okay, as, as a company, you cannot officially accept Monero or anonymous cryptocurrency. But technically, you, you, there is no way how to shut down. Yeah. Technically, the it's not possible, of course, but you know, uh, for example, nowadays I am facing the problem when I'm talking with other people mm -hmm. that somebody say, is saying that if you are trying to hide your financial data, mm -hmm. it pro uh, the government will think uh, that probably you have something to hide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know uh, this is also the problem. The question is, if you deserve absolute private digital privacy or not because for example personally I'm proponent of absolute uh, digital privacy uh, which means I think we have also right to protect our financial transaction even against the government or tax office because it's our right so because most people think they have right to protect only their communication for example like so everybody here use uh, everybody here uses for example end-to-end -end encryption HTTPS uh, signal and these all these all these protocols but not everyone here think that we also have have a right to absolute uh, digital privacy and it includes also the privacy to our uh, financial transaction so so what I want to tell you what the government can do uh, they can uh, demonize they can demonize the, the, the cri cryptocurrencies. They, they, they're already doing, doing that, by the way, especially anonymous amounts. But I think it'll, it'll, it'll have, or it, it, it will have completely opposite eff effect. So for example, in Venezuela, like in Venezuela, there is hyperinflation. So many people, like, informa like IT people in Venezuela, they started to buy Bitcoins because Venezuela pesos uh, doesn't have any value. So the Venezuela government decided to, uh, to ban the Bitcoins. And technically, it just means that four times more people in Venezuela started to buy Bitcoin. So it had, so it had completely different uh, effect. So what I can tell you, if the Polish government or European government officially starts to prohibit Monero or some other true anonymous cryptocurrencies, everybody starts to use Monero. <laughs> So it has opposite effect, especially if, if you know, it's not technically possible to detect that you have some owner or that you send some owner to someone else because everything is encrypted. Okay, well, some other questions. I have a question because my smartphone only has eight gigabytes of memory. And when it comes to Monero, as I assume, I have to own whole blockchain on my device. Uh, and the Bitcoin, I don't have to uh, do that. And how you can solve it? Because, uh, for example, when I go to your cafe in uh, pr Prague, yeah. uh, I have to g go there with my one terabyte uh, hard drive. <laughs> and that's not the case, I think. Yeah, this is a problem. Because in case of Monero, uh, it's not technically possible to implement CP uh, SPV wallet like you have mycelium, for example, for, for Bitcoin in, in case of iOS or, or Android. So this is a technical problem. Uh, you, yeah, for example, now you have Monero wallet on Android system, also on iPhone system, but it's, 
but it's completely online system, so you need to provide your private uh, Monroe key. <coughs> you need to provide your um, private key to some third party, and I strongly do not recommend to use this application. So this is still in progress. I think uh, the better phones, they have more gigabytes. Uh, so for example, in one or two months, there will be OnePlus, the geeky phone, OnePlus 5 with 256 gigabytes. So on this phone, you can easily download the whole, uh, whole Monroe, Monroe blockchain. But I, I admit that this is a problem. But it's only a question of time when then we, we will have a much better hardware for, for using Monero. For example, Zcash has even more hardware requirements uh, than, than Monero. Because in, when you are using Zcash, you, you need at least eight gigabytes of RAM to, to sign transactions. So it's really memory consuming. Another question? Um, hi. Let's say I would like to buy, buy a beer in your institute in Prague. So I have to pay in a Bitcoin or, or Monero. Mm -hmm. The question is, does the price include tax? <laughs> yeah, um, as I know, okay, so we are non-profit, non-profit, uh, non non-government, non non-commercial organization, which basically means that uh, uh, we are not VAT payer, so this is the first thing, so we are not, we, we don't pay VAT officially, and then uh, all our profits we invest, so basically uh, we, we don't have profit, and because we don't have profit, we don't pay taxes, in a in a completely legal way. <laughs> and there was also a question. Okay. Uh, because uh, I think that when it comes more uh, uh, public I, uh, or something like that, um, if every coffee on the world will be bought by the Monero, mm -hmm. uh, this will the blockchain will grow uh, very very high, and. Uh, I personally think that it will, uh, the hardware will never uh, be d d as good as the, to store the whole block blockchain. It will, it, it will be become popular. I think this is not a problem at all. Like, uh, for example, Monero compared to uh, Bitcoin has uh, dynamic blocks. So, for example, in case of uh, Bitcoin, you have one megabyte blocks, and these blocks are really full, as you can see. So, in case of Bitcoin, you need to pay really high fees when you want to pay in Bitcoins. But this is not a problem of Monero, because Monero has dynamic elastic blocks. So, even more user, uh, more user will use Monero, uh, longer blocks Monero will have. Uh, and also, it means the transaction for the uh, uh, the fee for transaction fee will be lowered. This uh, uh, opposite in case of, uh, of Bitcoin. More people use Bitcoin, higher fees are because the block is uh, just one megabyte. In case of Monero, more people use Monero, uh, lower fee is for one transaction. Another thing is that there is a, a Moore law. According to Moore law, I mean every one and a half year every one and a half year, the capacity of disk and RAM are doubled, something like that, which basically means that uh, if this law is still valid, the cryptocurrencies will not have any problems in the futures. Uh, yeah, could you like have your blockchain in a cloud storage? So like your, the, the, the Monero blockchain will be on a cloud storage, like Dropbox or something like that. And in this way, you don't have to have it on your on your on your phone on your computer. Or yeah, it like it's technically it's technically possible, but the problem is that for the first time, you need to completely scan the given blockchain. Uh, so you need you need at, you need download the blockchain. Okay, maybe not the whole one, but the part of the blockchain. So, for example, if Mono blockchain has forty or fifty gigabytes. Uh, and you have a mobile application, you can have it on the uh, Dropbox or something, but you need physically download, um, to, for example, each megabyte of this, of this 50 gigabytes uh, blockchain to your phone, try to decrypt it with your private key, reveal if the given transactions are for you or not, and then, and then uh, throw it away. So yes, something like this is possible, but you still need to download 50 gigabytes to your because you, you cannot um, the, the problem is that you cannot 
you, you don't want to provide your private key to the cloud or some third party. And you want to, do, you, you want to make decryp decryption operation on your phone. Okay. Other question? Taxes, you are not paying taxes on that, but let's say I would like to have a commercial cafe taking Bitcoin for Monero, mm -hmm. and I want to pay taxes on that, mm -hmm. yeah? So how, how to account that, yeah? There is probably okay. no official exchange rates between uh, normal currency mm -hmm. and this, so maybe this can be viewed as a uh, government way of preventing the wide uh, yeah, acceptance of cryptocurrencies by businesses, mm -hmm. because it's just too much hassle to, to, to deal with this in, in account, yeah? So maybe we can, maybe there are some initiatives to to make it more, uh, how do you, how would you make it more popular among, let's say, commercial business venues? Like technically there is no difference between, uh, between physical anonymous cash, like physical slotties, like a paper coins, and and uh, Monero, which is the same anonymous, it's, it's, it's just e-cash, it's an anonymous e-cash. So in the similar way how you, uh, how you accept uh, your invoices paid in, phys in cash to your, uh, to your accounting, I think you should, in the similar way, you should accept uh, invoices paid uh, by Monero, which is also cash. Okay, consider Monero like an e-cash, uh, anonymous e cash like the normal physical cash. So from this point of view, there should should not be difference. Uh, but it, but it also me the problem is that for example in the European Union uh, we have limits for uh, uh, cash transaction. For example in Slovakia we have limited five thousand euros for uh, cash transaction for uh, uh, legal person like companies and fifteen thousand euros for a physical person. So for example in Slovakia when you want to uh, make, w when you want to uh, send or when you want to charge some company for something, uh, you cannot pay in case of invoices above of 5,000 euros in cash. It's prohibited. So the problem is how the European legislation or Polish legislation cope with this problem. If, the, if, they, if, if, if they consider Monero to be like a cash, they, you, the, the same limits should apply to, uh, to Monero. Uh, but if they consider like an electronic, electronic transaction, uh, no, no such limit should be applied. And the thing is that no one knows. I'm, I, I can tell you if you contact any lawyers in Poland or Slovakia, Czech Republic, no one knows. So what we should do, we should just try it and we'll see what, hap what, what, what will happen. I have no idea. No one knows. Okay, there is a question. Probably the last question. Uh, hi. If you want to run a business like you have this with this cafe and any anything, you, you have your bills. Yeah, you have to pay for water, you have to buy coffee beans. Mm -hmm. Even if you even if you uh, want to, to have all your income in Monero, mm -hmm. you have to, tr to exchange some money to physical fiat money in order to, to cover your bills. How do you solve this problem? We use a lot of exchanges. So there are a lot of uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. I think uh, in a problem of police, there is an internal community of people uh, who, uh, who have two different problems. Uh, one of them, they need to buy Bitcoin. The other, uh, uh, the, the other group, they need to sell Bitcoins. So we do uh, exchanges inside of our community, which means it can be done in a completely anonymous way. But if you, if you have no such community of people using crypto, uh, there are many ways how to do that. You can use Bitstamp, you can use Kraken, you can use uh, uh, Bitfala, a lot of different services uh, to exchange your cryptocurrency, even for example, Monero, uh, to fiat, fiat money, to Zlotis, for example. So this is technically solvable pro uh, problem quite easily. Last question. Okay. Uh, 
for example, if you want to send the money uh, to Kraken, let's say, and you want to exchange your fiat uh, money to Bitcoin, uh, you need to set the uh, title uh, when, when you are sending this money. And at the end of the title, you have the suffix like kraken.com or coinbase.com, uh, which uh, is you can easily then identify that this payment was made uh, to Coinbase, for example. So do you see here any kind of uh, possibilities to violate your privacy, like by a bank or something like that? Yeah, uh, so if you're paranoid, you should definitely not use these officially exchange services. Uh, what you can do, you can use local bitcoins. I don't, I'm not sure if you know local bitcoins, which is, um, the, it's, it's the, uh, is the list of dealers, buyers, and sellers of bitcoins or some other uh, cryptocurrency. So we can easily find uh, who in Krakow or in Warsaw uh, sells uh, bitcoins or some other cryptocurrency. But the problem is that, uh, that local bitcoins as well as Kraken is also regulated by the government. Uh, and fortunately, we have a solution. And the solution is a fully decentralized uh, crypto exchange. And it's called BitSquare. So check the website, bitsquare.io. It's a fully decentralized uh, crypto exchange which cannot be technically regulated by the government. And when you, you, when you use it, it you, can do, you can do that in quite an anonymous way. Uh, the last quick question. <clears throat> According to the local Bitcoin, for example, let's say there was a scam and someone of the local Bitcoin uh, is in possess of uh, Bitcoins that come from scam, let's say and you want to sell those bitcoins on local bitcoins and you buy those bitcoins and then you want to transfer them somewhere let's say to Kraken and Kraken can detect that it was from a wallet that, was, uh, that took part in a scam and they are going to block that, block your account or whatever so is it that case, is it possible, is it happening? There are threats on uh, Reddit but uh, actually it's not easy to guess, guess if it's true or not Yeah, yeah, yeah. for example, it's, yeah, because uh, Bitcoin blockchain is public, it's quite easily to detect that the given Bitcoins are, for example, from some malware or some scam activity. You are completely right. But uh, this verification is done only by few exchanges. So I'm more than sure that if you receive some Bitcoins from uh, such illegal activity, you can easily mix uh, the service using, uh, for example, uh, mixing services I mentioned in my presentation, or you can you can try to use XMR.2, which is fully working mixing service, and I'm more than sure that there are don't don't do any any verification of uh, of, of, of Bitcoin, so, so they don't have any any blacklist or whitelist. So it's it's technically definitely possible. The time is left. So, if we want to continue, maybe in a smaller group, and just to start uh, collecting the light. Okay, so thank you a lot for coming here, and you are strong, I, I would like strongly invite you to uh, Hackers Congress Paralnipolis during the first uh, October weekend. So, thank you a lot, and come to Prague.